ay, ay, ay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Molly. And thank you for the very, very energized, warm welcome to the podium. I think I'm well hooked up here. <laughs> but <laughs> let me begin by acknowledging, of course, the honorable political leader, the very distinguished Mrs. Kamala Basad Bisesa, political leader of the United National Congress, leader of the opposition, parliamentary colleagues in our midst, uh, the Honorable Devendra Tanku, the Honorable Ravi Ratiram is also with us, Senator the Honorable Jayanti Lakshmi Dial, uh, members of the local government fraternity with us, all the councillors of the Pinal Devi Regional Corporation, Members of the press, activists, friends, may I welcome you all for the first in a new series, in an energized series of the Pavement Report. Can we give a round of applause to our political leader, the Honorable Kamla Basad Bisesa, for inspiring, inspiring the return of the Pavement Report that is meant to take the issues to the people in every constituency, in every village, in every city, in every town throughout Trinidad and indeed Tobago to raise issues concerning the people and to take the fight to the PNM and to Rowley. Yes. While we do this, Keith Rowley, pass patu. <laughs> Kazem Hussein, I believe, the chairman of Caribbean Airlines, Rani Mohammed, several of, uh, members of the staff of the Office of the Prime Minister, members of the staff of uh, other state enterprises, including the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, are now off. They have jetted off to Saudi Arabia, Dubai, and London, where they will rack up a bill in excess of three million Trinidad and Tobago dollars, and they will achieve nothing. They have left the shores when Trinidad and Tobago faces its darkest hour. Keith Rowley has led a delegation to flee this country, a delegation of 15 persons plus that will spend taxpayers' money on food, on drink, on hotel, on traveling, on entertainment that will bring no benefit to the people of Trinidad and Tobago. Indeed, the citizens of this country are living in fear and not only innocent citizens but guilty citizens are also living in fear the most dangerous place to assemble now is in front of a police station they cannot protect you in front of a police station today there are reports which we will check and we believe to be true that bandits held up a home a geriatric home. Mm. This is where you put your elderly, you put persons, your loved ones and so on for the care that they need with medication and 24-7, you know, attention and so on. And the bandits went and held them up, took away their valuables, whether it is phone, jewelry, a small amount of cash and so on. This is a country where they stop on the road and hold up a seatbelt gang. Now, when you hold up a CPEP gang, you're looking for a Nokia phone. You're looking for some petty cash. That is what you're looking for. They held up a buy in day bay. They're looking for the sales of the day. They got $250. The sales of the day. This is Trinidad and Tobago. It is unrecognizable from the paradise that Kamla Pasad Bisesa left in 2015. It is unrecognizable. And today we face several challenges in crime, poverty. Today I got a WhatsApp from constituents and so on indicating that there are families in our own constituency who cannot put food on the table. Christmas is upon us, all these councillors and MPs and so on. You, you will be inundated with calls for a food hamper because people want food. They want support. They want you to help a, ch a child 
They want you to help the child in school, as the case may be. This country is not the country that we knew and that we loved. Today, what do we face? We face a situation where you're not sure when you're going home if you'll arrive safely home. You're not sure you'll leave the house safely. And brothers and sisters, while we say this, Minister Fitzgerald Hines remains in office, as Dave told us, like Kum Karan, sleeping away for years, sleep away. And when he awake, he says something stupid and then he sleep away again. <laughs> that is where we are. Keith Rowley has gone. He will not be back in this country, I believe, for about three weeks. Huh? There's a prime minister who has left this country for three weeks not to return. Now, when he's ready to return, we're not sure he could find Trinidad to come back. But they will go, they will enjoy, they will enjoy taxpayers' money. Nothing will happen and nothing will change as a result of those trips. I ask, and we will find, we will file the relevant questions in the parliament. Stuart Young, as minister in the Ministry of the Attorney General, he was that before. He was Minister of National Security. He was that before. He's now Minister of Energy. And he has always been something called Minister in the Office of the Prime Minister. I don't think there's any place on earth this fellow has not gone. I don't think so. He has traveled. <laughs> Somebody that shouted out the only place he had gone is jail. But what, what my mother used to say is, what I meet you. So, brothers and sisters, he has gone everywhere in the world. Everywhere, traveled. What has come out of all these trips? Absolutely nothing. Not a job, no investment, no development, nothing. Man, they couldn't even get a job for people to pick apple in Canada. At least in the 70s and so on, you know. We used to get a job for locals to go to Canada and pick apple and so on. Nothing has happened from all this travel. And they continue to squander. They continue to squander. While this is happening, the murder rate today, I'm told, today, is 506. 506. And counting, we're going down to the 31st of December. It may surpass last year. But the murder rate has hit 506. Nobody's saying anything. Two young boys were killed the other day. We dismiss human life because we say, oh, they may be involved in something bad now. So, that. And I come immediately to the point, one of the points I want to make. I heard the Commissioner of Police speaking, and the Commissioner of Police is now saying that, you know, this problem with crime and so on, I, I think that has to do with parenting. People are bad parents. Now, I want to tell Ms. Erla Christopher, who may well be around my age, huh? who may well be around my age. In fact, we went, believe it or not, I think we went to the same school. But you would not know that unless I tell you. I want to tell her, every generation has challenges with parenting, Dr. Mego. Do you know in the 60s, parents used to look at their young children and say, were you going in that flowery dress with a, a flower in your head and listening to crazy music and, and shaking and, and thing? Do you know in the 70s, parents used to quarrel that the children were in clothes too short and then the children were in clothes too long? In the 80s, they quarrel. The fella head, he not cut any hair, he hair too long. Ten years later, they quarrel and the fella hair too short. Parenting is always a challenge of every generation. Every generation has challenges with parenting. And parents of today will always look at their children and say, you all are not what you should be like we were. But when we were children, our mother and father also complain. Huh? Mother and father also complain. Were you going in white socks? Were you going in that um, clothes? Parenting is always an ongoing challenge for every generation. And in 20, this is 2023, in 2033, somebody will say something about parenting again. That is the nature. But you cannot use that with, with no pun uh, intended, but you cannot use that as a cop out. Your job as a police commissioner, as a leader of the police service, is to confront criminal enterprise. Is to put the policies, the programs, the action, or the institutions in place to deal with crime. You can't raise your hand in the air and say, this is a problem with parenting. 
Every generation has a problem with parenting. This is a problem of policing. This is a problem of law and order. It's a problem of law enforcement. And quite clearly, the commissioner, I think she'll maybe kum karamnik as well, <laughs> but she doesn't understand that her challenge is to deal with a problem. It is not to pass it off as parenting. Everybody in every, every generation since the in establishment has a problem with children and parenting and so on. You all know that. Many of you are parents. Many of you are parents. And when your children get big, they will have a complaint about your grandchildren. So we cannot use that as a cop-out. And the commissioner of police must understand that she has a job to do. She has to introduce policies, programs, institutions to deal with that job. And don't use that as a cop-out, as an excuse. Parenting. Yes, we parenting always have challenges. It will be like that for the next hundred years. So I, I begin by telling you that. The other issue I wanted to raise quickly before I get to the TSTT matter is that this matter that people are calling on the political leader about crime talks and crime talks and so on. The man who have to lead the crime talks, where are we going? He fly off and take off. So who you want Kamala Prasad Mr. Sata to talk to a ghost? Who you want she to talk to an empty chair? There's no crime talks because the leader of the government who is responsible for the crime talks, who must initiate and attend and engage the opposition, he has fled. He has absconded. He has gone. He is now MIA as, as Tanku told us. Missing in action, not Mia Motley. And he will not come back for a long time in this part. So by the time he come back, he hear my grow. <laughs> we will not see him. He has gone. So forget that the business. The leader of the opposition has asked serious questions about those crime talk discussions. Who will be included? That the, the stakeholders must be included. We must discuss not only legislation, which we do all the time, but policies issues the political leader of this party has gone every single monday night for the last i don't know how much years talking about our crime plans our crime policies what is our program there is nobody in this country who understands english and who could read two words english who could believe that the unc has no crime plan we have the plan we have the personnel we have the policy we have the program So this nonsense criminologist talking, you know these criminologists, fellas, whoever they are, eh? I don't know what is a criminologist, by the way, but whoever them are, they always crop up, you know, and attacking the opposition. You're not serious, you're not doing this. You know, Pandey said years ago, some of them is like, is like rat does come out of a corner every now and then, you know. I think Pandey had the thing for them, you know. He said them like rat coming out of a corner every now and then, and then running back in a dark corner. Who is this criminologist, huh? They don't have one, all they want to do is attack the opposition. Yeah. The, 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 the criminal. Why them do tell them go and solve crime now by themselves? You know, talking rubbish all the time in the papers. And somehow the news there and them just find the number. You know, some people I thought dead, somehow they just find the number. Some, I thought people pass away and things like that. So, somehow the news they just find the number and call them for a comment. It's like a fellow in Tobago, a former head of the public service. I think he's the only head of the public service since 1962. Because he alone does comment on everything. Huh? So, brothers and sisters, don't take on these people with the stupidness on crime talks and so on. This evening, I want to make a, a couple points. Yesterday, we addressed, and the UNC is on the move. Huh? Yes. I want to tonight compliment yes. the political leader for having our party in a state of readiness. Having our party on the move, we are now lifting the tempo. Yep. Yesterday press conference, today pavement, Monday coming, Monday night report at Cuba South. We are on the move. This is today. I look at you in this audience and I tell you we had 18 hours to mobilize this wonderful, successful yep. meeting in our Putin's. This United National Congress today is the most organized, the most mobilized political party in the Caribbean today, the United National Congress. Forget Trinidad, in the Caribbean. 
no political party in the Caribbean could call a meeting today for tomorrow and have this sellout crowd go live on social media platform and have this dynamic list of speakers addressing you. None in the Caribbean. In the Caribbean. And we are moving. We, we are moving, brothers and sisters, with a tempo. And we will be exposing the PNM in the hours and the days to come. And we have to keep up that tempo because we are now in a state where they are on the edge of a cliff. Rowley is holding on by his nails on the edge of a cliff. And Kamla Pasad Bisesa has a nail clipper in her purse. So you know what that means? Anytime, anytime we are ready, we'll take them down, brothers and sisters. We'll take them out. And today, I want to to reiterate some points made yesterday by the very, very honorable, the very intelligent member for Princess Town, the Honorable Barry Padarat, who spoke yesterday, our Shadow Minister of Public Utilities. And yesterday we made some points which I want to reiterate and deepen tonight in our conversation with you. Brothers and sisters, yesterday we expressed concern over the recent cybersecurity breaches. We have highlighted the unsettling lack of clarity surrounding the extent of these breaches do you know brothers and sisters the amount of state agencies that have been hampered impaired affected hot in the last couple of years let me read for you we have had data hacking undermining from the office of the attorney general and legal affairs TSTT, Price Smart, Ports, TT Post, we have confirmed now. Southwest Regional Health Authority. They say somebody in Europe wants to know if your father had diabetes and your mother had uh, hypertension and blood pressure and thing and sugar. We have had B Mobile. Uh, this is ongoing. Immigration Department. It is unraveling. Why it is that hackers feel that they can get away with this? Because Trinidad and Tobago has no government. They have no protection. There is no cyber security policy or institution in this country today. Brothers and sisters, I want to remind you that this did not start today. Indeed, brothers and sisters, in 2019, there was an article in the newspapers in 2019. It was the 26th of July, 2019, which stated that several state enterprises have been hacked and their data stolen. 2019 is an article in the Toronto Tobago Guardian, 26 July 2019, that speaks of the Ministry of National Security, that speaks of other um, national enterprise development company, telecommunications authority as well. The point I want to make is that since 2019, this government knew that hacking, data breach, uh, was a problem, was a serious problem. They did nothing, absolutely nothing. Today, when it hit the fan, they fire Lisa Agard. I want to ask you something. Four people dead in a pipeline two years ago. Anybody get fired? Four people died in a pipeline. Not the, well, the report, I don't know where the report is. That in the pipeline too. And four people died, but you know nobody was fired? No Newman George or George Newman or whoever. No Chow. I listen to our whoever. Nobody was fired. Data breach. Lisa Agard got an instruction from the board of TSTT, led by one Sean Roach, including some Ennis and some Lashley and all the people and so on. Dutton, Howard Dutton and so on. She got an she got a, 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 a email or a communication saying, do not speak on this matter at all. Do not communicate to the public unless the board approves the communication. They then fire she for not communicating. <laughs> I all know breach for Lisa Hagan. I, 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 I don't know the lady really. But the board of directors must take control and the entire board must be fired. The entire board must be fired. We live in a data-driven world. Today, things like your ID number, your date of birth can reveal a lot about you. Hackers can put together just like a jigsaw puzzle and all of a sudden they have your identity. 
your identity is important because if you lose that identity it can be used to do other criminal activity if they lose that there are organizations in this country the judiciary unicoma i'm coming to unicoma in a little while tstt southwest regional health authority price smart have experienced data breaches the government has taken no steps to protect the public we need them to inform us how deep was this breach how extensive was it is it just a website tstt has said nothing they have an international partner called checkpoint an american israeli company that company has not to our knowledge presented a report on what has happened and they are paid millions of dollars to protect your data but they have said nothing they have said nothing unicoma acknowledged and updated its website following a breach but there are issues to deal with unicoma and i will put it to you this way unicoma plays a pivotal role in tran tobago not only as a retailer but as a facilitator of numerous small businesses aiding the underprivileged middle income groups you know when we think of data breach right people say people think in their mind this is um big time rich people that big shot kind of business and thing now like people with credit card and wire transfer and banking here and thing they in trouble the ordinary man or woman he or she has nothing to worry about data breach and thing but let me get to that do you know unicoma facilitates the purchase of household items you want a fridge you want a stove you want a washing machine a dryer or something you buy on what is called terms ain't that you buy on terms when you go to buy on terms you put all your data what is your name you're working cpep how much money you're getting where you're living where this money going every um fortnight or month you put that in your data unicoma handles that data because they are the ones who protect that money that you use that a lot of businesses use to give this small man a, a little washing machine a dryer or something now this small man might be buying a, a washing machine or a sofa not only for this small man house but for somebody else's house now when you do something like that all your data everything on the road now everything on the road now oh let's see trouble now like when they buy a sofa you know where the sofa going but when they breach that data everybody know where stove going where washing machine going where sofa going where dryer going that is a problem so that oven cooking a lot so brothers and sisters do not feel the point i'm making is do not feel that this thing has to do with rich people and big shot people alone who are who are using you know high level visa credit card mastercard and all these kind of things the ordinary man and woman who buy things on terms you submit data and when you submit data that is stolen and that can be used by criminals because they will know how much money you have i told them yesterday if you are using a security company in your neighborhood for your house or for your community there is data there and people can find out when you coming home when you leaving in the morning where you working what time you likely to arrive and turn off the arm what they call the thing the alarm what time you're leaving in the morning to turn on the alarm where the alarms located in your property and worse if they monitor your cctv camera and there's a breach then criminal enterprise will watch your cctv camera and there are people who have cctv cameras around their yard some people even have in their house so imagine you have a data breach and the criminals can now access the cctv camera in your home and on your property so this is not a matter that we must think is a high class matter is a upper class is is big shot people and big papi people who are affected it is the ordinary human being because everything today is electronic transaction this crazy rowley go on and say he say he want this to be a cashless society now some people say the society already cashless eh, because nobody are cash say cashless already but do you know cashless means things are on electronic meaning you use electronic and say seriously you use the internet the internet is the backbone of every electronic piece of technology but the, the caribbean as some of you may know we are connected by what is called submarine cables there are still cables in the sea that's why i call submarine cable that connect us suppose something go wrong with that it is affected it is damaged it is sabotaged 
in, a, in an attack of some kind. Do you know if the internet goes down, you cannot pay a bill, you cannot pay a fee, you cannot collect money too, you cannot collect fees for some purposes, the whole society will collapse if those submarine cables are damaged or affected or compromised in some way. But Rowley don't understand that. He say cashless and poor fella, he say he never use an ATM machine in his life. He never use an ATM machine. So, no, he mean he just, just move with a bag. You know? He just move and, and, and Rohan and, and actually have a measurement for a carry box. As opposed to a stack box. You know? So Unicoma will tell us that is the example of how this affects ordinary people. And that is an important point I wanted to tell you. That the public need to comprehend that Unicoma and other groups serve a very important role in this country. Apart from selling furniture and so on, they facilitate a number of transactions. And these transactions supply sensi they have sensitive personal information and data. And that cannot be compromised in the hands of the criminal class. A data-centric world creates new challenges, right? I'll tell you. Years ago, when you're watching TV, you see people moving with drugs, cross-border drugs, guns, ammunition, regrettably human trafficking, moving human beings. Today, it is data. So we must create institutions and, and new uh, programs and policies. And yesterday, we called for a national cyber security center to pull all the law enforcement agencies together, personnel, resources, equipment, to deal with this challenge that will be here for a long time to come. This is a challenge that will also face another UNC government. This is not a PNM challenge. This is a challenge that would face us for the next 25, 50, 100 years. So we must not use institutions built in 1962 to deal with a problem in 2023. You have to build new institutions. There are people who are into academic work, who are into industry. They are trained, they are knowledgeable in technology. They have to also give us the benefit of their expertise on how we deal with that. So a national cybersecurity agency is a must that we must create to deal with this challenge that we face today. And the government cannot handle data security. They cannot handle cyber security capability. They cannot do that. And it, everything has collapsed around them. This hacking incident where 1.2 million customers of TSTT have lost their data to the criminal enterprise, to international hackers. This the PNM cannot deal with. They cannot because they are not strong on law enforcement of any kind. So brothers and sisters, these are the issues that we face today. I also wanted to indicate to you, before closing up and so on, that the, the leadership of our party has been speaking on dealing with crime. We have asked that the government not only meet on crime, but institute new policies and programs. Mrs. Prasad Bissessa have spoken. Have you noticed she has spoken about stand your ground legislation? And that is something we must introduce, that persons can protect themselves in this time so we have to ensure that we get the program the policy the laws in place to confront the new challenges that we face you cannot confront it with an old national security institution old national security minister old policy you need new you need fresh change in order to do that the other matter i wanted to raise with you before closing because we are in this constituency now when we were in office, as all of you know, we built a spanking new South Campus of the University of the West Indies. If we throw this bottle from here, we are in the university. What have they done? They kept it closed out of spite, out of malice. The Ramaitres Hindu School, the PTA president is here tonight. Parents are here tonight. They kept it closed for eight years. Do you know children have graduated from the Ramaitres Hindu School and never went to the Ramaitres Hindu School? They went to a temple in Rock Road where they could not do the education in the way that normal children could. And we are very thankful that they had the temple and the Mahasabha facilitate that. But they could not go there with the food they want to eat for lunch. 
they couldn't go there and, and be in a school, a real school. Ramai Trace in the school, UE South Campus. In Clark Road, Mrs. Posad Bissessa constructed a, uh, an educational center in Clark Road. If you go there now, what you see? Bush. Bush closed down. So brothers and sisters, we must work hard to ensure that we open the South Campus of the University of the West Indies. The Education Center in Clark Road. And might I say, the Kamla Pasad Bissessa Education Center in Clark Road. She had been the sole inspiration for that. Nobody inspired that as Kamla Pasad Bissessa, which she did in the constituency there. They left it. You know, and when I pass Clark Road, I cry when I see all the, the bush on them school and so on. It will take more money to rehabilitate that than it took to build it. You know, the PNM, part of their propaganda, I wanted to remind you, you know, part of their propaganda. Nasty. Part of the propaganda, they talk about the OPV. When Kamala came and UNC come, we cancel the OPV. The OPV, offshore patrol vessel and so on, right? Massive, massive ship they wanted to buy. That size of that boat is the size of the Queen's Park Savannah. You could imagine today if they had that boat, what happened? It would have had Karaini vine growing on that. Chicken and duck would have been hatching there. You could have put goat to graze on the boat. They cannot manage a Coast Guard vessel of 40 feet. They will manage an OPV. They cannot get fuel to put on the six Damian vessel that we buy. They will get fuel for the OPV. That would have been abandoned somewhere. They would have opened a museum and have Juve on it or something like that. Do a Juve like they're doing in San Fernando. They would have had Juve celebration on the OPV. That is what would have happened. Thank God the partnership government cancelled that and got $1 billion back of taxpayers' money by the work of Anand Ramlogan and Kamla Basad Bissessa. And then they come now, they tell us about the Point Fortin Highway. The Point Fortin Highway was supposed to run from San Fernando to Point Fortin. It has no highway from San Fernando to Point Fortin. Huh? I challenge any one of you and those listening, drive to San Fernando. Continue driving and see if you're going to end up in Point Fortin. You will end up in the Gucharan River right here. You will end up in the river because the highway have four missing pieces. They build a highway with four missing pieces. Debe, you have to come off Debe and find your way somehow through the M2 Ring Road and so on to Paria Suite to get down there. When you go Paria Suite, it have three or four places that you come off the highway, go through a village and then you come back. If you are the most diligent, well-known man or woman in South, you'll get lost. So forget tourists and so on. They have broken up this highway and they have, they have busted up like a jigsaw puzzle and four pieces missing. And they boasted, you know. They boasted we build the highway. Build what? There is no highway. Our concept, our vision was when you leave Rice, um, the, the lighthouse, Rice Road, Portersville, you take one drive without a traffic light and you reach Point Fortin. Today, you have to wiggle and worm and find your way through about four missing pieces. I went on the highway one day, the boats, they open it. So I said, well, I have to take a drive. When I go along there, I see Sheila Roti Shop. I see Ja, ja Delicacy. I said, but well, there's not the highway. They said, no, 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 there's the old main road. You have to come off and then come back on, on the highway. But they boast them like they do some great thing. That highway is ours. The Point Fortin Hospital was built by the People's Partnership Administration. The PNM never built that. They stole it so they could take two more years to open it and claim it's their own. And that has been the governance of the PNM. So, brothers and sisters, I raise these matters to tell you that you have to be mindful of their propaganda. You know, one thing about the PNM, I mean, I don't praise the PNM never in my life, and I, I will not do it until... I will not do it in my life, and maybe after, too, I will still not do it. But they talk about, you know, they, 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 but you see, propaganda, somehow they're good at that. Huh? Yes. Somehow they're good at propaganda. Yes. Telling people we cancel the OPV. Telling people, I mean, the partnership, the this, the that, with this, with that. Their propaganda is loud. So our truth must be louder. That is the point. Our truth must be louder than their propaganda. 
I raised a matter the other day, trash trail in, in um, some in the East West Corridor, trash trail, Aruka somewhere there. Do you know today I have received confirmation from officers of the Housing Development Corporation, HDC, that indeed several buildings in that housing estate must now be demolished completely. What? They have reached the point now where a report has come in from the structural engineer indicating that what they thought they could have fixed, they cannot fix. And they have to demolish three or four un uh, housing unit buildings, which is really a hundred housing units built in Trust Trail by the HDC has to be demolished because they had no management, because they had corruption, mismanagement, that they could not manage and project manage a small housing estate. I am proud that when we were there, and I served as Minister of Housing, man, we built house in Union Hall, we built house in Princess Town, we built house in Shogunas, we built house in East West Corridor. And hear what? Not one house fall down. None fall down. We built nine police stations, none fall down. We built two fire stations, uh, my Aropina, none fall down. We built 7,000 houses. Huh? No, the, the Penal fire station didn't fall down, Stuart Young fall down. We built 7,000 homes, none fall down. We, we outfit the government campus. You know, nobody says anything that we spent $1 billion outfitting the government campus. We never hear somebody say a drop of water from rain falling on the head. No. Nothing, you know. They spent $441 million on the Red House. All our we parliamentarians had to get up one day and run. We put our umbrella over Rodney Charles' head and move him out because it had a leak on the head. Do you remember? Yeah. We had to put an umbrella over MP head and run them out from one side of the Red House. $441 million and it started to leak. When we say, what happened? Noel Garcia says, he said, no, 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 that's not the roof, that's the air conditioning system. So you didn't know the air conditioning system had to be done properly? You didn't know that? They, they boasting about every single thing they build. La Salturas, Trest Trail, Red House, everything collapsed. The United National Congress are the natural builders of Trinidad and Tobago. We have built. Kamla Pasad Misesa, Jolene John, myself and others, Suraj Rambachan, Tim Gopi Singh, Fazal Karim, all of these people. They have built. And they will build again. We will build again. So brothers and sisters, as I close up, I ask you to keep strong, keep united, and... You know, I, when I talk about unity, I always talk about unity because people are telling me, you know, oh, they're hearing this about the party, they're hearing that about the party. I think I want to tell you something. The only thing you must hear about this party is that it is united, it is cohesive, it is strong, it is focused. Our leader, Mrs. Kamla Pasad Misesa, is providing a great vision for us at this time. Great guidance, effective leadership. She will be there on Monday, so I want to tell you and the listening audience throughout Trinidad and Tobago and the world that on Monday night we roll into Coover South yeah. at the multi-purpose yeah. hall and we will have a battery of speakers and we will have the political leader the Honorable Kamala Pasad Misesa to address the people of this country on Monday night we ask all of you throughout the country not only here mobilize organize get yourself together and come out on Monday it is not virtual because I see people asking now if we meet in virtual or not. Listen, everything virtual because everything on social media. But this is life. This is action. This is human being. Come out on Monday night and let us address the people on the critical issues facing Trinidad and Tobago. My brothers and sisters, thank you all. Long live the great people of Arupuch. Long live the great people of Arupuch East. Long live the United National Congress. And surely, as the sun rises in the morning, victory will come to the UN. Thank you and God bless you.